Hey you guys, over the next few weeks we're going to be taking a break from analyzing Kingdom Hearts 3 and instead look at the dry forms from Kingdom Hearts 2. This week we're going to be looking at Valor form. I want to quickly gloss over the basics of this form, but since this is such an old game, I do not want to take too much time breaking every single thing down. Valor form is the first dry form you receive in Kingdom Hearts 2. It boosts Sora's base strength stat by 3 and its magic stat by 1. It's interesting that you get a boost to magic even though you can't use magic while in Valor. I wonder if maybe your magic stat increases your magic resistance or defense, but I don't really have any evidence to support that. Anyways, you can activate Valor form by having Goofy in your party. This changes Sora's clothes red and a Florida lease adorns each pant leg and sleeve. While Sora is in the Timeless River world, he does not change in appearance, but the HUD changes to a red hue. While he is in Tron's world, the blue circuits on his body all change to red. While in his Halloween form, Sora's pumpkin mask changes to something reminiscent of the bomb creatures in Final Fantasy. It also looks like part of a Fleur de Lis is poking out of the top of the mask. While he is in Christmas Town, a Fleur de Lis adorns his hat and back. His hands glow with a red light while in this form, and while moving, red shards fly back behind him. While idle, the red shards will fly up behind Sora. Let's look at the abilities associated with Valor form. Valor has two ground combo finishers and two air combo finishers. For both the ground and air combo finishers, you will use one finisher if you have a single enemy in front of you, or the other finisher if you have multiple enemies in front of you. There is also an ability called Over the Horizon which lets you jump towards an enemy while attacking if you press square. This overwrites the blocking ability you have while in Valor. Omega Finale is an ability that lets Sora jump right to the end of his combo by pressing square. If you have Finishing Plus, you can perform another combo finisher right after using Omega Finale. With Finishing Pluses, you will do the other combo finisher regardless of if you are surrounded or attacking a single enemy. The only other action ability for Valor Form is Retaliating Slash, which is an ability you get in Sora's base form as well. This lets you counterattack after being knocked back by pressing square. The growth ability associated with Valor Form is High Jump. There are also three support abilities that come with Valor Form. Sync Blade, which equips another Keyblade, and a combo plus for the ground and the air. Let's move on to the combat for Valor Form. The ground combo has three different types of attacks, and two different combo finishers. The first attack has Sword doing a horizontal slash with his left hand, before taking a step forward and doing a vertical slash over his head. The second attack has Sword dashing forward before swinging both Keyblades across horizontally. Sora actually flips the Keyblade in his left hand backwards before he does the slash. The dash during this attack also does damage to enemies. You will switch between these two attacks depending on how far the enemy is away from you. I never realized that Sora's attacks while in a dry form were situational. The last attack Sora can do will trigger if he is attacking multiple enemies. Sora slashes horizontally with his left hand and then falls with his right. He then crosses his arms and swings both Keyblades horizontally in front of himself. The first combo finisher will trigger if you just have one enemy in front of you. Sora brings both Keyblades to his sides as they glow with a bright light. You can see air or light swirling up around the Keyblades as well. The light breaks as Sora jumps into the air bringing both Keyblades above his head. He strikes the ground which sends pillars of light shooting forward. This knocks enemies up into the air. The second combo finisher triggers if there are multiple enemies around Sora. This finisher has Sora twisting and pulling his Keyblades back before spinning a couple times and jumping into the air. Sora continues to spin as he rises up into the air, creating a ring of light and air around himself. This does leave Sora in the air after the attack, so you'll have to be careful if there are still enemies around you. The air combo has two types of attacks and two different air combo finishers. The first attack has Sora swinging upwards with his right hand in a vertical strike. Sora uses this momentum to twist in the air as he pulls his left hand upwards to strike downwards in another vertical strike. The second attack has Sora twisting in the air as he slashes horizontally with his right hand before following it with a horizontal slash with his left. The first combo finisher triggers if there is only one enemy in front of Sora. Light charges around him as he brings his left hand across with the Keyblade coming around behind him. He slashes horizontally as he thrusts his other Keyblade forward. During this thrust attack, Sora brings the Keyblade that he slashed horizontally with behind himself, spinning it in his hand. Three bursts of air can also be seen as Sora dashes forward. The second finisher triggers if you have multiple enemies around you. It's easy to see where these slashes originate from since each slash creates light and wind effects. 
so it twists backwards pulling his right hand upwards in a diagonal strike. He then slashes horizontally with his other hand before slashing downwards vertically with his right hand. Sora follows this up with a vertical slash upwards before he crosses his arms and slashes downwards diagonally with both keyblades creating an X pattern with light and wind. Now let's talk about the strategy for this form. While this form does not have a guard mechanic, it is very easy to parry enemy attacks with your own attacks. This makes it easy to counterattack if you can get the timing right. With the different situational attacks, this form is good for single or multiple enemies. I would say it is probably better for single enemies since the combo finishers used when surrounded leave you a little open. If you are careful though, it can be good for multiple enemies and with the ability to jump straight to combo finishers, you can easily clear the area around yourself or stop an enemy from unleashing their attack. Using square to quickly jump towards an enemy is also pretty helpful, though combo finishers in the air can leave you a little open. You will want to put on keyblades that are high in strength stats and you won't really need to worry about magic stats since you can't use any while in this form. When fighting single enemies, it's pretty easy to chain a ground combo into an air combo. Most attacks from the combo finishers will leave the enemy up in the air, which you can then follow up with another combo. I really like this form. It's extremely fast and the attacks are quick and clean. Being able to double tap square to get straight to a combo finisher is also pretty nice and helps out in tight situations. I don't really miss magic while well in this form, though I will stay away from this form if I'm going up against an endgame boss or secret boss since I can't cure with Leaf Bracer or guard with Reflect. Anyways, I hope this was interesting for you all. I feel like this was a little rushed and quick, but I didn't really want to rehash information that many of you probably already knew, such as gaining growth abilities through leveling up. Hey you guys, today we're going to be looking at Wisdom Form. This is the second drive form you receive in Kingdom Hearts 2 and is activated by having Donald in your party. This changes Sora's clothes blue and flames adorn his pants and sleeves. Much like Valor Form, Sora does not change while well in the Timeless River world, but the HUD does change to a blue hue. His circuits in Tron's world change to a deeper color of blue, and while in his Halloween Town form, Sora's pumpkin mask changes to look like a black mage from the Final Fantasy series. While in his Christmas Town form, flames can be seen on his hat and back. Blue sparkles appear around his feet and float upwards. Air also circles around him while in this form. While idle, Sora will spin the Keyblade behind him. You can actually see his fingers pushing the Keyblade as he spins it. He does two different spins while idle. One spin has him flipping the Keyblade around three times, while the other spin has him only flipping the Keyblade twice. This is very reminiscent of Ventus's idle animation in Birth by Sleep. While moving, Sora slides across the ground. Every couple seconds, he will kick his legs out. Sora's jump is also changed while in wisdom form. When Sora jumps, he lets go of the Keyblade and spins before grabbing the Keyblade and falling back to the ground. Also, after he drops down to the ground, he flips the Keyblade back to his backhand style. Let's move on to the abilities for wisdom form. The first ability is called Wisdom Shot. This changes Sora's attack option to shoot. Sora shoots out small projectiles that he can use to attack enemies from a distance. Mobile action lets Sora perform actions such as using an item or casting magic while moving. This is incredibly helpful as you can keep moving instead of stopping completely when performing magic or using an item like you do in base form. Magic haste makes Sora cast magic much faster, allowing him to string together magic combos faster. Base form takes about 4 seconds to perform 2 casts of fire and a fire finisher. Wisdom form takes about 2. It pretty much halves the time for each cast of magic with this ability. Magic Spice powers up the Magic Finisher. I'm not sure if this means that it makes the strength of the attack stronger, or if it just changes the look of the magic, since I did some testing and it seemed like the cast of magic did the same amount of damage. I may be wrong though, let me know what you think down below. The last action ability associated with Wisdom Form is Retaliating Slash. This is the same ability as the one from Base Form where you can counterattack with Square if you are knocked into the air. The growth ability associated with Wisdom Form is called Quick Run. This lets Sora dash across the ground. The higher the level, the longer you can dash the square. The only support abilities that come with Wisdom Form are the MP Hastika abilities, which speeds up the restoration of Sora's MP during MP Charge. With both of these together, MP will restore in about 20 seconds, while the base recharge time takes about 50 seconds. Let's move on to the combat for Wisdom Form. As previously mentioned, Sora's attacks are changed to projectiles that he can shoot at enemies from a distance. I feel like these projectiles have some significance, but all I could find was the Terra Aqua and Ven Metal special attack from Union Cross, which looked a little similar. By the way, thank you Endo for this footage, you guys should check him out if you haven't, he does all of the metal showcases for the Union Cross mobile game. Anyways, the combat is incredibly simple for this form. 
Sora's base combos are all the same with him holding his Keyblade forward and using the tip of the Keyblade to shoot three projectiles towards the enemy. He uses his other arm to brace himself as he shoots and an orb of light appears as well. The combo finisher has Sora sliding onto the ground as he fires shots out. As he is shooting out the initial five shots, he starts to stand back up before he turns and flips backwards, changing hands with his Keyblade. As he flips backwards, he shoots out three shots, then spins the Keyblade, changing hands, before turning the Keyblade in a locking motion and shooting out a rapid burst of shots. This rapid burst is another five shots. The aerial combo is not really a combo, but just three shots. Even if you hit an enemy, you can't continue attacking and can only do one attack at a time while airborne. One last thing I want to point out for the combat of Wisdom Form is that I don't think that your strength and magic stats change the output of damage. Here I am using different Keyblades with varying attack and magic stats and it doesn't seem to be affecting the damage I do. Let's move on to the magic for Wisdom Form. Casting Fire causes the sword to dash forward with flames surrounding him. These are the same as the base form casts of fire actually. It even covers the tip of the Keyblade with fire, like the base form cast. The magic finisher for fire keeps the flames from the previous cast, but also adds six orbs of fire to the outside of the attack that spin around. The animation for this cast has Sora jumping into the air and spinning around with the flames, before falling back to the ground continuing his spin. When casting Blizzard, Sora shoots out a blast of ice that causes his Keyblade to shoot upwards from the force. This also pushes Sora back a bit. The magic finisher for Blizzard has Sora holding his Keyblade like a shotgun and shooting out five casts of Blizzard that shoot out on a wide blast. This cast of Blizzard pushes Sora back much farther. If you are targeted on an enemy, the casts of Blizzard will all home in on the enemy. Thunder casts have Sora spinning in a circle as a giant bolt of lightning comes down and hits the ground. Four beams of lightning arc outwards away from the initial bolt. The magic finisher for Thunder has Sora raising the Keyblade with both hands and spinning as four casts of Thunder rain down. Magnet uses the same animation as the Thunder finisher with him raising the Keyblade and spinning as a cast of Magnet appears. This damages the enemies during the cast as opposed to the base form cast of Magnet which only damages enemies with the initial cast of Magnet. The animations are really cool for this magic. For the regular cast to reflect, Sora holds both arms outwards in a T-pose as the Keyblade spins in front of him. For the magic finisher, Sora slashes with his arm and sends the keyblade spinning around him before he catches it in his hand behind his back. The cast for Cure is pretty simple with Sora copying the regular Thunder cast animation where he spins in a circle while casting. Wisdom Form also has a unique animation while casting magic in the air. This animation triggers while casting Thunder, Magnet, or Cure. When he casts this magic, he flips backwards and spins around bringing his arm with the keyblade across his body. Let's talk about the strategy for this form. This form is of course centered around using magic. Your casting and recharging are faster and your magic finishers are powered up. I would not suggest using normal attacks unless you are trying to stun an enemy out of a combo so you can attack it with magic. Also with the idea of dashing and being able to use items or casting magic while moving, this form is definitely all about staying in motion and attacking with magic. This is probably my least used form in Kingdom Hearts 2. I don't use a ton of magic when I play Kingdom Hearts as I love just attacking with the Keyblade. I understand now why I never really liked this form since attacking was the worst thing you could probably do in this form. I think now with a better understanding of this form, I may enjoy it more. One more thing I want to talk about with this form is the flames and why they are similar to Blitzform's flames from Kingdom Hearts 3. Both forms have these flames and also have a focus on mobility. Blitzform more so since Wisdom was split kind of between magic and mobility. I think the speed attribute became more prominent after Kingdom Hearts 2 with Birth by Sleep, Union Cross, and finally Kingdom Hearts 3, but I think Wisdom Form was the start of that. I don't know though, what do you guys think? Hey you guys, today we are going to be looking at Limit Form. This is the third drive form you receive, though it is exclusive to the Final Mix version of the game. This drive form is unique in that it can be triggered without sacrificing any of your party members. This changes Sora's clothes to a variant of his Kingdom Hearts 1 clothes and crowns adorn his pants and sleeves. His HUD changes to a pinkish color while in the Timeless River. His form in Tron's world changes to a variation of his Kingdom Hearts 1 clothes like his base form. The circuits in this form glow golden and white. In Halloween Town, his mask changes to a checkered heart, and while in Christmas Town, his hat and back sport a crown. It's kind of strange that Final Form has the crown symbol in Halloween Town and not Limit Form. Let's move on to the abilities for Limit Form. The first four abilities are the limits that are usable in this form. 
These are Sonic Rave, which is a thrusting attack, Last Arcanum, which is a powerful combo attack, Strike Raid, which lets you throw your Keyblade towards enemies, and Infinity, which starts an air combo and ends with Sora sending rays of light outwards that home in on enemies. I will be going into more detail with these later. The next three abilities change your combo finishers. Zantetsuken is a ground combo finisher and will trigger if you are attacking a single enemy. If the enemy is weak enough, it will instantly kill them. Ripple Drive is also a ground finisher and triggers when Sora is surrounded. The higher your magic stat, the more damage this will do. Hurricane Period will trigger during an air combo regardless of how many enemies you are fighting. Zantetsu Counter is an ability that will let you counterattack with Zantetsuken after a successful guard. Reflect Combo lets you quickly move to a guard during a combo. Guard is pretty self-explanatory, though the guard is changed to Sora's Kingdom Hearts 1 guard animation. The last three action abilities are abilities that base form Sora can also receive. These are Slapshot, which does a quick uppercut to the enemy, Slide Dash, which closes the distance between you and a far enemy, and Aerial Sweep, which will trigger if you are below an enemy in the air. The growth ability associated with Limit Form is Dodge Roll, which is an ability from Kingdom Hearts 1. This lets you dodge enemy attacks a little more effectively than Quick Run. HP Gain is the first support ability which restores HP when your limits hit an enemy. Draw and Lucky Lucky are abilities you can receive in base form. Draw draws in nearby orbs, and Lucky Lucky increases the drop rate of items. MP Rage restores Sora's MP relative to how much damage he has taken. MP Haste is the last ability associated with limit form. This increases MP restoration by 25% during MP Charge. Let's move on to the limits for limit form. I wanted to cover these ahead of combat since the abilities section covered limits before combat. Limits take the place of magic and give Sora access to four attacks that he used in his previous adventure. Sora's party members disappear during these limit attacks. All of these limits mirror special attacks from Kingdom Hearts 1, and during the startup of the attacks, both versions have an orb of light or energy appearing around Sora. Sonic Rave is the Kingdom Hearts 2 equivalent of Sonic Blade from Kingdom Hearts 1. Sora dashes forward seven times with the Keyblade thrust out in front of him. After the initial dash, a reaction command appears called Rave. This is the same as the Final Mix version of Kingdom Hearts 1, and is probably where the name Sonic Rave came from. The reaction command cycles through until the last thrust, which is triggered by a finish command. The first six dashes have light spiraling around the outstressed Keyblade, and the dash is so powerful air is pushed back behind Sora. Sora also creates a beam of light in front of the Keyblade as he dashes forward. During the final thrust, the light at the edge of the Keyblade is stronger and four tails of light fly past Sora. Last Arcanum is the Kingdom Hearts 2 equivalent of Ars Arcanum from Kingdom Hearts 1. The first part of the limit is a combo that is done without any input from the player. Sora bays the Keyblade in light and starts the combo with an uppercut, followed by four horizontal slashes. He then slashes upward, followed by a downward slash to finish off the combo. A reaction command called Bash appears, which lets you continue this combo. You can bash five times until a reaction command called The End appears. The first bash is a thrusting attack, the second and third bashes are horizontal slashes. The second horizontal slash has Sora using the momentum from the previous attack to spin around on his foot to continue the next attack. The fourth bash has Sora continuing the spin and slashing downwards with an overhead slash. During the overhead slash, Sora grabs the Keyblade with both hands. The last bash has Sora leaning back on one foot and jumping forward with another overhead slash. The last attack, titled The End, has Sora crouching down before doing a sideways flip as he does an overhead flipping slash with both hands. Strike Raid has Sora throwing his Keyblade forwards five times. Beams of yellow and white light circle the Keyblade as it spins forward. After the first throw, you can trigger the reaction command Raid three times. This then changes to Judgment, which has Sora jumping and throwing his Keyblade forward. This makes the Keyblade move up and down as it flies forward. It also travels farther forward during this last attack as well. The final limit is Infinity, which is the Kingdom Hearts 2 equivalent to Ragnarok from Kingdom Hearts 1. The limit starts with an aerial combo. Sora does an uppercut that pulls him into the air, followed by a slash downward. Sora then does three horizontal slashes, letting the last slash carry him around in a mid-air spin. Sora then charges up energy and has access to three different reaction commands that cycle quickly. The options are Shoot, Impact, and Giga Impact. Giga Impact has the most rays of light shot out, with the Impact and Shoot commands shooting out fewer rays of light. The Ball of Energy glows when the Giga Impact option is available. If you don't choose one of the commands, Sora will just cancel the attack. One last thing I want to point out is that the Genie Summon has incredibly similar names for its action commands. These are Sonic, Strike, Arcana, and Infinity. It's kind of interesting, just wanted to point it out for you guys. Anyways, let's move on to the combat for limit form. The base attacks of the combat are not different from base form, so I'll just be covering the combo finishers. The ground combo has two finishers, Zantetsuken and Ripple Drive. 
Zantetsukin triggers if you are only attacking one enemy. Sword crouches down while spinning the Keyblade behind himself and grabbing it with the Keyblade facing backwards. The tip of the Keyblade shines with light and Sword dashes forward with the Keyblade held sideways, slicing at enemies to his side. A ray of light can be seen during the slash and a couple flashes of light appear during the slash. During the Ripple Drive finisher, Sword glows red and the tip of his Keyblade gathers energy. He then raises his Keyblade into the air and creates an orb of magic around himself. Sparkles and orbs of light appear around Sword during the end of the attack. The aerial combo finisher has Sword flipping backwards three times, slicing outwards with his Keyblade. Two rays of light spin around with Sword during this attack. On the last flip, Sword slashes upwards, shooting up a pillar of light. Let's talk about the strategy for Lumen Form. Since you don't need to sacrifice any party members for this form, it is pretty good for pretty much any situation, especially for fights when Sword is by himself, obviously. <laughs> if you are fighting a tough enemy, this is probably a good form to use since it has both HP gain and MP rage, so it is incredibly hard to die if you have abilities like Second Chance or Once More. Really, any situation can be handled by Limit Form since it has good attacks for single or multiple enemies. Personally, I love Limit Form. When I first got Final Mix, this form carried me through practically every data battle and probably the Lingering Will as well. The HP gain and MP rage combo is just really good. I also really love the throwback moves to Kingdom Hearts 1. I'm a sucker for nostalgia and that instantly made me fall in love with this form. Hey you guys, today we're going to be looking at Master Form. This is the third or fourth drive form received in Kingdom Hearts 2 depending on if you are playing the original game or the Final Mix version. Master Form is triggered by using both party members on your team regardless of who they are. This changes Sword's clothes yellow and crosses can be seen on his pants and sleeves. While on the Timeless River, his HUD changes to a yellow hue. His circuits in Tron's world change to yellow. While in Halloween Town, so his pumpkin mask changes to a mix between the Valor and Wisdom Form masks. These are sewn together to show a balance between physical and magic attacks. In Christmas Town, so his hat changes to the cross emblem and his back sports three of these emblems. Lightning arcs up around the Keyblade in his right hand and both of his hands glow yellow. He flips the Keyblade in his right hand occasionally. It is a little bugged out as it passes straight through his hand as it flips. He also spins the Keyblade in his left hand in front of himself, making it spin faster every couple seconds. It does not guard attacks though, that would have been a nice touch. His left hand also has a golden ring around it and seems to constantly be charging. While moving, this will leave behind a gold sparkle effect. Also while Sora is moving, he will cross his arm and hold both Keyblades to one side. When jumping, Sora crosses the Keyblades in front of himself. Let's move on to the abilities for Master Form. The first two abilities are combo finishers. Master Strike will trigger if you are attacking a single enemy, while Disaster will trigger if you are attacking multiple enemies. Master Magic changes your magic and powers it up. Aerial Dodge is the growth ability associated with Master Form and lets Sora perform another jump while in midair. This can also be used to block enemy attacks. Sync Blade equips Sora with another Keyblade, letting him dual wield. Endless Magic lets Sora chain together magic attacks until he runs out of MP. This also takes away magic finishers. Sora is equipped with two air combo pluses and two draw abilities. The combo pluses let Sora do two more attacks in the combo before moving to the finisher. Draw, of course, draws in orbs around Sora. And lastly, MP Haster increases Sora's MP restoration by 50% during MP charge. Let's move on to the combat for Master Form. The only kind of combat Sora can do in this form is aerial combat. Even if you are on the ground, as soon as you start the combo, Sora will jump into the air. If you start on the ground, the first attack has Sora jumping up and flipping himself upside down. He does a horizontal slash with his right hand as he twists in the air. The Keyblade in his left hand moves around Sora during this attack since his arm is moving during all of the flipping and twisting. The second attack triggers first if you are in midair. Sora spins in the air, pulling his Keyblades to one side before unleashing a horizontal slash that spins him in the other direction. During both spins, Sora actually slashes with the Keyblade in his left hand, though there is no effect seen like the light effect with the horizontal slash. Since Sora has two air combo pluses on by default with Master Form, he will alternate between these two attacks. You can cut off the end of the attacks and jump straight into the next attack if you hit X fast enough. The first combo finisher has Sora slashing both Keyblades in front of himself, with his right hand going diagonally downwards and his left going horizontally. During the slash, Sora does a flip and comes out of it slashing downwards diagonally with his left hand before doing a similar slash with his right. He then does an upwards diagonal slash with his left hand before flipping and slashing diagonally downwards with both Keyblades creating an X pattern. Most of the attacks actually create an X pattern during the slashes. This last dual slash looks incredibly similar to one of Valor Form's air combo finishers. The second combo finisher has Sora casting a magnet I believe and spinning around pulling enemies in. During the spins, magnet orbs will spawn and circle around with Sora. At the end of the attack, Sora slices outwards with his Keyblades and pushes enemies outwards with magnet. 
two rays of light spin outwards as well. This last attack shows the blend of magic and physical attacks that Master Form is supposed to be. Let's move on to the magic for Master Form. As I said before, the Endless Magic ability effectively gives Sora only one form of magic for each cast, since it takes away the combo finisher. Fire has Sora twisting and dashing forward, casting a normal fire around himself, but also adding the flame orbs that we saw from Wisdom Form. Blizzard has Sora shooting multiple casts of Blizzard out in all directions. Sora's animation during this has him spinning forward slashing with the keyblade in his left hand before flipping backwards during the cast. This is very similar to the old version of Blizzard from Kingdom Hearts 1. This is best used in mid-air since the bottom shots of Blizzard will just hit the ground if it is cast on the ground. Thunder has Sora casting 4 thunders per cast. During the cast, Sora does a cartwheel. He pushes off of his keyblade while flipping. If you are on the ground, the thunder cast will have lightning arcing out from the main bolt and hitting the ground, but if you cast this in the air, the lightning will arc out in different directions. Also, if you are locked onto an enemy, you will cartwheel around the enemy hitting them with thunders. Reflect has a pretty large radius and Sora slashes outwards with his left hand during the cast. During the cast of magic, Sora twists the keyblade in his left hand around himself, damaging enemies that are close. The magnet cast also works differently than base form. Base form does an initial burst of damage when the enemies are dragged in, but master form's magnet will damage enemies during the cast as well. Cure does the same kind of cast as magnet does, damaging enemies if they are close enough. I believe during all of the magic casts that Sora does a bit of physical damage. It's pretty nice and again shows that blend of magic and physical attacks that master form embodies. Let's move on to the strategy for master form. This is definitely an aerial based form. All of the combo attacks bring you into the air and being too close to the ground will cut off your attacks sometimes. Even the growth ability is centered on you being in mid-air to trigger it. I think this form is really cool, but I never really used it. I think the focus on aerial combat kind of made me always feel like I was vulnerable since you don't have many options to guard or evade attacks when you're in the air. You can trigger aerial dodge during combo which would have made it a little bit more useful. You can though block an enemy attack with aerial dodge and then go straight into a combo which is nice. I am not a huge fan of the two air combo plus abilities that come with this form since you also get a couple plus abilities with base form making the combo last for a bit too long before you get to a finisher if you have them all equipped. Hey you guys, today we're going to be looking at anti form. This dry form is received alongside valor form and is triggered by chance based on how many anti points you have. Each time you trigger a dry form other than final form, you will add an anti point to the counter. If your counter is at 4 below, you will have a 0% chance of triggering this. If your counter sits between 5 and 9, you will have a 10% chance of triggering it. If the counter is at 10 or above, you will have a 25% chance of triggering it. There are a ton of things that affect this counter as well. If you go into anti form, it will subtract 4 points in the counter if it is the original game, or 5 points if it is the final mix version. Final form will subtract 10 points from your counter. Getting a new form will clear your counter and take you back to 0. If one of your party members is dead, your counter will be set to 0 and it will be impossible for you to trigger anti form. If you are in a scripted battle, which means your command menu is red, your chances of triggering anti form will double. So, if your counter is between 5 and 9 points, you will have a 20% chance of triggering it and a 50% chance if your counter is over 10 points. If you are fighting an organization member, your chances will be multiplied by 5. So, 50% chance and 125% chance. <laughs> If you are fighting Armored Zemus, your chances will be multiplied by 10. So you're pretty much screwed if your party members are alive and you've been spamming those drive forms. A huge thank you to the Kingdom Hearts Wiki for all of their detailed information about these anti points. There's a link to them down in the description below. Anyways, when you trigger anti form, Sora's drive form animation turns into an orb of darkness that disperses into wisps as Sora drops to the ground. This form changes Sora's clothes to different shades of black. His skin turns dark, his hair changes to black, and his eyes turn to yellow orbs that are reminiscent of the Heartless's eyes. A strange symbol adorns his pants, while a different symbol is on his sleeves. I believe this is the first form we have seen that has different symbols on the pants and sleeves. In the Timeless River, Sora's appearance changes to a dark version of what he looked like before. His mouth is gone just like in his base form and his eyes become colorless. In Tron's world, his circuits no longer glow. In Halloween Town, his mask changes to a Shadow Heartless, and in Christmas Town, Sora's hat and back sport the same symbol that we see on Sora's sleeve in his base form. Wisps of darkness come off his hands and arms. During his idle animation, Sora jumps and lands on his hands before pushing himself back up. He looks around a bit before crouching down for a longer period, kicking his legs up a couple times. I want to take a second to talk more about the symbol seen in this form. The pants have a wing pattern coming out of the symbol, but I haven't been able to find the whole symbol anywhere. I don't believe it's a normal symbol like the ones seen in the other drive forms. I could be wrong though. The symbol on Sora's sleeves kind of line up with the handle of Oblivion. Let me know what you guys think of these symbols in the comments below. Before we get into combat, I want to talk about a couple things that are unique with this form. 
With item drops, Sora can't pick up HP orbs, but he can pick up drive orbs. Drive orbs make the gauge drop down faster. You can also still pick up items while in this form. All commands other than attack are grayed out if you are fighting enemies, and you can only choose the revert action when there are no enemies around. Some movement is changed as well. If you press square, Sora will jump backwards, twisting in the air before he flies forward. If you are near an enemy, Sora will home in and spin around the enemy. The last thing I noticed was that while hanging from a ledge, Sora will hang from his foot. Let's move on to the combat for Antiform. The ground combo starts with Sora swiping down horizontally with each arm before he flips backwards and curls into a ball, spinning forward. After spinning a couple times, Sora uncurls and swings upwards with his hands, locking them together at the top and smashing them downwards on enemies. This attack leaves him on the ground, ready to spring into his next attack. For the next attack, Sora stretches his right hand out and rises into the air. He then kicks off the ground, dashing forward and bringing his hand across his chest. At the end of the dash, Sora slashes across with his hand before flipping backwards and landing on his right hand in a handstand before coming back down to a crouched position. The ground combo finisher starts with Sora dashing forward and swiftly moving around as he rises higher into the air. At the end, Sora dashes downwards, creating a wind effect around himself as well as behind himself. While Sora does damage during the quick movement, it doesn't actually seem like he's attacking. The air combo starts with Sora slashing upwards horizontally with his right hand and using that momentum to twist around. As he twists, he pulls his left foot up and swipes it down before kicking up with his other foot in another swipe. At the end of these swipes, Sora dashes forward. The second attack has Sora flipping backwards and using his hand to spin himself around, kicking outwards at enemies. At the end of the spin, Sora will do a backflip and then turn around swiping outwards with his left hand. The air combo finisher is an insane flurry of kicks and scratches. Sora starts this attack by swiping horizontally with both hands and then raising his hands and scratching downwards. He then kicks diagonally upwards with his left foot before kicking horizontally with his right using the momentum to spin around. He then follows up the spin with a kick horizontally downwards with his left foot before thrusting his left hand forward and doing a rising scratch with his right. Sora then does a scratch downwards with his left hand and then scratches horizontally with the same hand. He raises both hands and scratches downwards and then does the same three kick combo as before. He then ends the combo with a twisting rush downwards. You can press X right before Sora dashes downwards to change the end of the combo. This causes Sora to raise both hands above his head, bathing them in fire or some sort of dark energy. He then thrusts them downwards, creating an orb of darkness as rays of darkness shoot around. The orb dissipates after a couple seconds as the rays continue to fly around for a few more seconds. There are also some situational attacks in Antiform. If Sora is surrounded, he will flip forward onto his hands, kicking outwards around himself. At the end of the spinning kicks, he will stand upright and thrust forward with his left hand before he pivots with his left foot and kicks outwards at enemies with his right. After the pivot kick, Sora will flip backwards, kicking out at enemies. Also, if you press square while attacking, Sora will flip backwards, pushing off the ground with one hand before spinning in a circle as rays of darkness fly around him. At first, I thought this was Sora slashing at enemies, but we can see that he does not move his hands during this attack. At the end of the attack, Sora spins and rises up into the air. This spiraling seems to do damage to enemies. Let's move on to the strategy for Antiform. I don't know if there really is a strategy for this form, since usually it is sudden and random. Unless of course you're going into it with 2 become 1. You take double the damage, and while you can stagger enemies with your long combos, you're pretty open to getting hit since each hit of the combo goes on for a long time. Personally, I think this form is really cool. It shows a more rabid, unhinged version of Sora, which is just fascinating. I'm so interested in the darkness in Sora, so it's cool to get these brief glimpses of it throughout the series. While it's not an ideal form to use, I still enjoy using it, even though I usually die 3 seconds after triggering it. <laughs> hey you guys, today we're going to be looking at final form, but first I want to introduce Sora Alum 1 who will be helping you with this breakdown. Yo, what's up guys? It's Soralum1 and I am thrilled to be joining Bioroxis for this Kingdom Hearts 2 form breakdown. Without further ado, let's jump right into the breakdown. This is the final drive form you receive in Kingdom Hearts 2 and is triggered a little differently than the other drive forms. Much like the other ones, it is received after reaching a certain point in the story. Though final form is not able to be chosen in the drive menu until you randomly trigger it while trying to go into another drive form. The final mixed version of the game made it a little bit easier to trigger final form by giving you a keyblade after fighting Roxas, which either triggers anti form or final form when going into any drive form. Anyways, this changes Sora's clothes white and these swirly symbols appear on his pants and sleeves. I've looked into this and the only thing I've been able to find is that the summon symbol on the HUD 
has a little bit of the same aesthetic. I lined it up with Final Form Xemnas and it looks a little similar, um, but none of the symbols line up perfectly. While in the Timeless River world, the HUD changes to a lighter shade. His circuits in Tron's world change from blue to white, and while in his Halloween Town form, so his pumpkin changes to his iconic crown symbol. While in Christmas Town, the symbol on his hat changes to one of the symbols on his sleeve in base form, and wings adorn his back. Sora floats just above the ground while in this form, and two orbs of light circle him, fading in and out. His body itself also pulses with a white light. Probably the most eye-catching detail in this form though is the keyblade spinning behind Sora. While idle, they will stay crossed behind his back twisting in the air. In other forms, we have seen Sora briefly use telekinesis during attacks, but with final form, he's almost exclusively using telekinesis to control these keyblades. While moving, the keyblades will open up behind him which looks like wings. While jumping, Sora raises his hand and guides the Keyblades under him as he jumps upwards. The Keyblades lock together and spin up with him as he flips upwards and crosses his arms. Sora uncrosses his arms at the height of his jump, causing the Keyblades to break apart and spin around him. As he begins to descend, Sora pulls the Keyblades towards his hands, catching them before he throws them downwards. This causes them to circle below Sora and back to their place behind his back, although they stick outwards like wings during his fall rather than the usual position they're in. Sora also keeps his arms crossed after he throws the Keyblades to his back. When he lands, he spins once as the Keyblades circle around him and back to their original position, twisting behind his back. If you cut the jump short, Sora will skip ahead in the animation to where he catches the Keyblades and throws them to his back. This actually happens whenever you are dropping to the ground. When gliding, Sora spins both Keyblades in front of himself. His idle glide animation has the blades moving in sync in front of Sora twice with very straight lines before they spin in front of Sora for a bit before doing another two slices in sync. If you grab onto a ledge, the Keyblades will go back to their normal cross positions behind Sora's back, though when you jump up, they will slice outwards, damaging enemies who are close enough. At the end of the attack, Sora will catch them and throw them to his back, much like he does when he's descending from a jump. Let's talk about the abilities associated with Final Form. The first three abilities are combo finishers. Final Arcana is a combo finisher that will trigger if you are close to the ground and only attacking a single enemy. Final Strike will trigger if you are in the air while attacking a single enemy. Final Arts will trigger if you are surrounded by enemies regardless of if you are on the ground or in the air. Auto Assault is an ability that makes the Keyblades do damage while performing actions. So far I have seen this trigger while casting magic, jumping, gliding, climbing up a ledge, or using an item. Karma and Punishment powers up your magic attacks, and Mobile Action is an ability we saw with Wisdom Form, which lets you use magic and items while moving. The growth ability associated with Final Form is Glide. There are only two support abilities that come equipped with Final Form, Sync Blade and Magic Haste, which don't really need an explanation since we've already talked about these abilities before. Let's move on to the combat for Final Form. When close to the ground, Sora will start the combo by making his Keyblade spin around himself in different directions, slicing at enemies in diagonal slashes. You can see Sora spinning and moving his arms as he controls the Keyblades. The second attack Sora does has Sora positioning the Keyblades near his hands as he slashes with them. He slashes downwards diagonally with his right hand before doing a similar slash with his left hand. He used the momentum from the second slash to do a spin in the air bringing both Keyblades back behind himself. Sora then thrusts both hands forward causing the Keyblades to do 5 quick strikes in front of himself. These leave behind slashes of light. These attacks change in order depending on if you are attacking a single enemy or multiple enemies. The attack with the quick thrust will trigger first if you are only attacking one person, and the slashing attack will trigger first if you are attacking multiple enemies. Also with the thrusting attack, it seems to bug out as the keyblade in his left hand almost always gets caught on the ground instead of following Sora's hand. The first combo finisher will perform if you are attacking a single enemy. Sora lifts his left hand into the air, summoning both keyblades to his hand. The keyblades face away from each other, but the handles overlap each other. He holds the keyblades together as he spins around before throwing it forward. This spins in a small blade-esque attack with yellow and blue light spinning outwards. After spinning a couple times, the keyblades break apart and smash together three times creating sparks and lightning when they hit. The first part of this attack actually triggers during the Roxas fight if you take his keyblades from him and do a sliding dash. The second combo finisher triggers if you are surrounded by enemies. Sora's hands glow a whitish blue as his keyblades and light spin out around him. The light spiraling out disappears and the keyblades move upside down with the blades facing the ground. Sora spins and moves towards one of the keyblades before kicking off of it towards the other keyblade. A light effect follows him as he dashes around, and two more light effects follow the initial light after the dash. He does five dashes before landing on his keyblade and jumping off of it. You can actually see the keyblade turn over to be a flat surface for Sora to jump off of. Sora does a backflip off the keyblade and spins downwards. 
The air combo starts with Sora sideways and twisting in the air, spinning the Keyblades around himself. Rays of light spin around Sora during this attack as well. The next attack has Sora doing the same kind of spinning attack, but is spinning upright instead of sideways. He also keeps the Keyblades pretty close together in this attack as opposed to the first one. After the spinning slashes, Sora slices with his right hand followed closely by his left hand. During the slice with his left hand, he slashes back the other way with his right hand. At the end of these attacks, Sora ends up with his arms crossed and his Keyblades behind himself. He then pulls the Keyblades up in a crossing slash attack that has rays of light accompanying them. The first combo finisher in the air is triggered if you are attacking a single enemy. Sora links the Keyblades together by their handles with blades facing away from each other and spins them in his hand as he dashes forwards. Rays of light circle the outside of the spinning blades. Sora then kicks horizontally, breaking the Keyblades apart. The Keyblades move to the sides of Sora and face downwards, moving up and down, pushing out blasts of light on either side. During these blasts, the Keyblades circle around Sora. Sora then flips backwards and the Keyblades move to his feet and then move outwards beside him as he spins. Rays of light circle Sora as well during this attack. By the end of his flips, the Keyblades are positioned around Sora's head and begin spinning around him as he dives downward. During this downward thrust, light spins around Sora. The other combo finisher is the same one that can be triggered near the ground. The only other thing I want to talk about in regards to combat is that you can trigger the second combo finisher halfway through the first combo finisher. So with this saw combo finisher attack, you can trigger the dashing finisher before he breaks the Keyblades apart and smashes them together. With the light blast finisher in the air, you can trigger the dashing finisher before you start the spinning and diving part of the finisher. Let's move on to the magic for final form. Fire has Sora summoning multiple casts of fire that spin around him. There are three pairs of fire that circle Sora, and both Keyblades have fire coming off of them as well. The animation for this attack has Sora flipping backwards as he clasps his hands together. As he comes out of the flip, he raises his hands above his head. The magic finisher has the three sets of fire that spin around Sora, but orbs of fire appear around him as well, and the Keyblades spread out farther to spin around. Sora's animation during this cast has him flipping forwards before spinning around, twisting his legs outwards. At the end, he pushes himself up and lands back in his idle position. Blizzard brings both Keyblades up beside Sora, shooting out two casts of Blizzard. Sora's animation has him raising an arm and spinning as the magic is cast. The magic finisher has Sora shooting out staggered shots of Blizzard before shooting out another double cast of Blizzard. Sora's animation has him spinning and kicking a leg out as his Keyblades circle him. He then flips upside down during the double shot. The shots of Blizzard cause the Keyblades to spin backwards after the cast. Thunder spawns three bolts of lightning to come down. The Keyblades are crossed during this and twist in the air during the cast. Sora does a roll across the ground during this cast as well. The magic finisher has Sora calling down 8 bolts of lightning. The animation has Sora spinning around and pulling his keyblades upwards by raising his hands. The keyblades twist around each other during the cast. At the end of the cast, Sora pulls them apart and sends them back to their normal position. Reflect does not change really except that the keyblades circle around during the cast. Also, Sora does the same animation during Reflect as he does when casting fire. During the magic finisher cast, Sora does the same breakdance animation as the fire finisher and the keyblades move out farther. Magnet is much shorter in duration when cast in final form and does a lot of damage during the cast as well. It shoots enemies towards you at the end of the cast if you are not directly under them. If you are under the cast, it will push enemies away from you. The animation is the same as the thunder finisher with the keyblades twisting around above Sora. Cure has his keyblades spin around him during the cast. This is also the same animation as the regular fire cast. Aerial casts of magic cannot be chained into combos, but you can fire off casts of magic incredibly fast while in the air. Let's talk about the strategy for Final Form now. Honestly, you can do pretty much whatever you want in this form. Even just jumping around and gliding can kill enemies easily. The attacks and magic are equally good and can be chained together pretty easily. It is also helpful that everything Sword does can damage enemies, be that jumping, using an item, or gliding, everything can do damage. Obviously, I love this form, but I feel like even with Oathkeeper and abilities to slow down the drive gauge, I never had enough time in the form. That, coupled with it costing 5 gauges, always made me hesitant to use it before I maxed the level. Other than that issue I had with it, I think the attacks and magic are so smooth, and I always loved how the keyblades hung in the air instead of Sora holding onto them. In terms of strategy, for me, I think the big thing is just being really active and moving with the form. It has parry frames on tons of movements as you jump and glide around, and every single spell gives you lots of mobility and gigantic AoE potential. I generally try to jump to bring enemies up and then combo them with air combos more because the blades surrounding you provide really good protection during physical attacks. 
If you are fighting a humanoid boss with revenge value, you can use Fyraga while in this form to do lots of damage while keeping them stunned. Just don't use the magic finishers and keep resetting the combo to keep the loop. Personally, this form is my favorite. For me, winning is only half the battle, which of course this form is amazing at, but the other half is styling on the enemy while you're destroying them and of course this is THE form where Sora appears to effortlessly outclass his enemy. He's so good he doesn't even need to physically hold his keyblades. It's a very divine feeling with mastery written all over it and for that I cannot get enough of final form. Again, thank you so much for helping out with this breakdown, Sorella One. If you guys have not watched his content yet, I will have a link in the description to his channel and also probably pinned in the comments. He does everything from let's plays to reviews to analyses like this one, so be sure to check him out. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. A huge shout out to Mr. Matthews, he's the one that made the opening animation uh, and also the transitions. He puts a ton of work into this channel and I appreciate him helping the content look so clean and polished.